Good morning. Well, this is exciting. Let's start a new project. Um, so this is this project is designed that you can do as much or as little work as you want. Um, it's creative. Um, I'm not going to give you guidelines for every single stitch thread. Um, this is sort of free form. It's all about what I've learned over the last years. So, so you can see I have chosen um, a soft background, sort of a purpley tone, and what I did was I selected a lot of soft, um, with a little bit of contrast, um, fabrics that I layered with. And the idea is that these layering pieces will be covered with embroidery, um, and they will peek out behind to give some interest on the wool. Uh, so we can, you know, here's some great selections of wool colors. If you were working with a blue, you would layer with um, blue fabrics um, to add a little interest. Here's a second one that we've been working on just to give you some ideas. Um, this one is in our tea, and I've done, we've used the new Fabulism fabrics, which I love um, because they're very soft to stitch on top of. Uh, so you have an option. You can layer it. Um, before we get started tomorrow, or you can just use a plain piece of wool and we will stitch directly on that. So I'm going to talk about a few helpful hints to do your layering on your, on your background. Um, and like I said, this is um, optional, but I'm a needle turner, so often I'll just needle turn different shapes onto the background using sort of low volume fabrics. Um, but there are some ways that make it a little easier for my students. Um, one way of doing straight edges like this is actually using a hot ruler. So I'll demo in a sec, but what I use is a hot ruler. Um, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with Flatter, but Flatter is a fabulous um, smoothing spray for ironing, which is biodegradable and there's nothing in it harmful, which I like, and it's starch free. So I use a folding pen, and this is a folding pen, and I fill it with flatter. Um, so the first thing I'll do then is I get my iron, and I've got a nice hot iron, and I'm going to put my um, hot ruler a quarter of an inch down from the edge of the side that I want to turn, and then using my um, folding pan, I just wet along the edge with the flatter, and then I iron it over the hot ruler like this. And the nice thing about the hot ruler is that it gives you a really nice straight edge, but a sort of rounded edge rather than a very sharp edge, and you can see how nicely it folds over like that. Um, so you would do, you know, all four sides of your piece like this, um, and then you would be ready just to applique it down. So, you know, once what I use for appliquing is my Fina 60 weight thread and a little um, number 11 short darner, and I will just stitch all these little shapes that I want to my background. Um, so if they're a bit larger, sometimes I will baste them in place first, and then I will um, applique them down afterwards. So they're fun. Like I said, these little shapes will just give you lots of uh, interest in your background if you choose to do that. I just wanted to do this because I want to show you what I do. So once I've done all the sides like this, I just clip out the little corners here. So let's see, I have a pair of scissors over here. I will just clip out the little corners, and that'll take some of the bulk out of your corners uh, when you applique it down. So there you go. It'll give you, you can see how nice and smooth these edges are, and then you don't have to needle turn, which um, I'm beginning to learn a lot of people prefer not to do that. Although, once you're a needle turner, you will never look back. Um, so that's good for any squares, rectangles that you want to put in your background. Um, another technique that I use a lot is perfect circles. And perfect circles are a Karen K. Buckley 
um, invention and they are fabulous. The, they are made out of mylar, which means you can iron on them. So I'm going to turn the iron down a little bit. You want to do it more on a medium heat than a very hot heat um, because they tend to warp them a little bit with hot heat, but they're still usable. Um, so you can take your bigger perfect circle and like a half inch bigger than the finished size you want and draw it it on your fabric and then cut it out on the line and then you will find the one that is a quarter inch smaller and that would be the finished size that you have. Um, so I've cut out the circles. I've also done this. I started with a knot and I always put my knot on the right side of the fabric and I've done a little running stitch all the way around my circle like in the center of the seam allowance and I want to bring this out so that it's on the right side of the fabric at the end here, like that. So I've got a little gathering stitch. I'm going to slip the perfect circle in and then I'm going to gather it up like that. So I'm going to gather it up and hold the thread straight across um, the circle like that. I'm not going to put a knot here but just hold it through and I want to make sure that this is all nicely gathered around, around it. Now I'm going to take my um, folding pen and I'm going to wet just the seam allowance a little bit here. Um, and then I'm going to put the iron straight on this. And you can leave that for about 30 seconds or so. Um, and if you were doing multiples, you could then, you know, gather up the next one and then this one would be ready. So perfect circles come in two different packages. There's smaller perfect circles and bigger perfect circles. Um, I use the bigger ones for the two sizes that I used on my piece, uh, but they're very handy uh, for all sorts of circles, for flowers and obviously for layering on the background. So once um, this is ready, you're just going to let it cool for a minute, um, and then you're just going to slip out the perfect circle like this, and um, you can adjust the thread a little bit, and I always just keep a little thread on the end like this so that I can always adjust it until I've sewn it down. And this thread is going to stay in your circle, but you can see how nice and uh, round that is. So that again makes it very easy to put um, some layering circles on your background. So hopefully that'll help you, um, you know, so Get ready with your background, um, use it just a solid piece of wool or spend the day layering it so that you are ready to um, get started with the stitching tomorrow. So this is my background, um, my fat eighth of wool. I have used um, four circles and three strips. Um, so you can see that I've used very tone on tone for some of them with a little bit of interest in the backgrounds. Um, and I went a little bold, I guess, with a stripe. Um, so just have fun. Just layer it however you want. There's no rules here. Um, and, you know, going forward, we're going to be filling it with a flower garden.